Good morning, everyone. Mark Weiser, who coined the term ubiquitous computing, actually said this back in 1988. He said uh, the most profound technologies are that are those that disappear. They blend into your everyday life and it becomes indistinguishable. This is exactly the phenomenon that we are facing at this moment. And what we are going to see in the next few years is that there's going to be devices that can sense, think and act on its own that you'll even forget a time when those devices didn't do that. Take a look at this uh, cartoon, if you want to call it that. Well, the robots haven't won anything yet and there were no battles. And that's still a long time away if that really is going to happen. But automation is definitely a reality. Whether it be in the consumer space, which is uh, in your lighting space, home appliances being controlled automatically, uh, uh, or whether it is in the shop floor, manufacturing, industrial space, we do see machines that are automated and we do see a large number of efficiencies uh, that can be derived by connecting them. In 1760 circa, it was the steam engines, locomotives. In about 1870, it was assembly line, electricity, mass production. In the latter half of the 20th century, it was uh, PLCs, computers, and then the internet towards the 90s. And the revolution we are seeing at this moment is that of cyber physical systems. Systems that are created to acquire data, to process data, and to convert them into actionables. Right, so we, we all know, so what drives this revolution? The fourth industrial revolution that it is called is very obviously driven by assets. And you've seen these projections. If you've, if you've been in the IoT space, even cursorily interested, you must have seen these projections of 50 billion by 2020, a trillion by 2035. These are large numbers. It doesn't make uh, a lot of difference whether that's 50 billion or 60 billion. What's, what's very important and what I want to draw your attention towards is that side by side to the, to the devices, there's also the massive explosion or the need to create applications and application development is something that's extremely essential. By a lot of projections, these are the numbers you see. There needs to be 5 million applications created for specific purposes by the year 2020. And by 2035, that's another big number. Now, so the, the nature of applications is going to change from being uh, specific, you know, usage-based usage applications, a small number of them, to purpose-built applications or customized applications, a large number of them. Now that we've established the need for building applications, Let's take a couple of steps back. This is your typical IoT stack. There's the variety of sensors, there's a lot of heterogeneous devices, there's shop floor equipment, there's manufacturing uh, machines, etc. in the lower tier. There's a connectivity layer on top of that, which could be the internet, the device clouds, the wireless networks, etc. And then you've got the application layer on top of it. What are the typical problems you're all facing as solution developers or solution developers across the world while programming for IoT, right? So the device environments with the large number of protocols there are in the IoT space and the protocol stack is all redefined. It's not the traditional IT protocol stack anymore. There's a new set of protocols that have, that have been defined by the IETF and organizations such as those. So you've got a dispersed environment of new devices. That's one of the challenges. The other is the variety of data that comes in different formats and the volume. You've got to deal with all of that while programming. And the third is with, you know, disparate frameworks that are being put out by various organizations, uh, fora that decide that, you know, this new framework needs to be 
uh, used for programming, you've got plumbing issues associated with that. And then all of these are real barriers to innovation because when you've got an application and let's assume you create an application, on top of that you want to create an additional layer of functionality, that becomes a whole new challenge. Now ThingWorks as part of PTC has been focusing on precisely this problem for the past many years, nine years to be precise. Um, it's in the application enablement space and we want to make it easy for you to connect devices to the central platform, to create a digital replica of the physical object, and then to create an application in a matter of days, if not hours. There are, there are cases of ours uh, where applications are actually built in a few hours once, once the programmer is actually uh, familiar with the tools. So what are the tools that we have? Let me, let me, th these are actually five steps of the IoT process. Uh, the sourcing of devices, sourcing of data from devices is done by the ubiquitous device connectivity layer that we have. You've got ThingWorks, Edge SDKs, ThingWorks, Edge microservers, and uh, there's REST APIs and Kepware if you want to do any industrial connectivity, machines on the shop floor. And then you've got that data now, what do you do with that? You have to contextualize it, you have to make sure that it's readable, understandable uh, in the digital world. We've got the ThingWorks Composer for that, which is essentially a model driven approach to programming. And, uh, and, and we've got the tools for that. It's, it's essentially codeless, which means you can drag and drop you, with, with any basic understanding of, of uh, programming, you can just start creating new code. And then we've got the analytics builder for synthesis of that information. Uh, you can incorporate analytics into it. There's, there's machine learning capabilities which can be incorporated. That's what ThingWorks Analytics Builder is for. And then what do you do after you have recommendations for insights? Right? You, you have to change the workflow of an organization, uh, processes need to be tuned, etc. For that you've got ThingWorks Workflow Builder, Workflow Manager. And then the mashup builder is to create interfaces and to actually have those web or mobile applications. You can drag and drop, again that's codeless or with minimum code writing in JSON, HTML, XML are the formats that are supported. And like I said, it can be created in a matter of hours once you're familiar with the tool. Two other partners, two other many partners that have done this, that have used our tools worldwide are mentioned here. OnFarm uh, is a company that's based in the United States. Um, they have created with our tools and you see the interfaces there, uh, they have created a smart agriculture application which is, uh, we, which once you put sensors into the soil, uh, it measures the soil um, moisture and the pesticide usage and based on the weather uh, data as well, it increases farm productivity and lowers the need for irrigation. Now this is very relevant for our Indian context as well with 52% of our economy being driven by agriculture. Uh, the other is about power generation. Uh, this company called DVM Technology in Turkey has actually improved the power generation, distribution and management capabilities of companies by creating this particular application. And both these, both the interfaces and I don't know if you can see that from there, but both, both these interfaces are all created entirely on the ThingWorks platform. The other kind of partnerships that we, we strike uh, with large companies and typically telcos because they've got connectivity uh, already with them, they've got the connectivity layer of the IoT platform already with them, is where they, they can use our platform and offer that as a service to the market that they think uh, they've got a good ecosystem in. So Vodafone has done this with us in, uh, in, 13, year, uh, in 13 countries. Uh, they've used our capabilities that I just talked about and they've, they've created a location tracker, you know, wireless payment solutions, asset management, telematics, and all of that. So they're gathering more uh, ecosystem partners to build verticalized solutions on top of 
the existing platform which they white labeled from uh, PTC Thingworks to start their foray into a lot of industries uh, and countries. Now, no, uh, and the last, last point on that was of augmented reality. Uh, there's no presentation on IoT that can be complete without the mention of augmented reality solutions because IoT is about converting the physical into the digital world and augmented reality is to take the digital data and to take it back into the physical world. It's about superimposing graphics on, uh, on, on physical objects. Uh, so the way we do it, uh, and, and we've acquired this company called Vuforia in 2014, 2015, uh, uh, who were already in a leadership position and now we've got a whopping 81% market share in the augmented reality space worldwide. The tools that are there, uh, Thingworks Studio is what you can use to create those experiences. Um, you see the image of a bike there, you have a whole lot of variables inside an automotive. Uh, this can all be dragged and dropped and we get the software code from the vendor itself and, and, and we can create an experience with that. Thingworks View is to install, that's a software you can install on your handheld device, it can be your mobile device, your laptop, your, your tablet, which has a camera. And you can scan what's called a thing mark, which is essentially the QR code of the AR world. And that will identify the device and you can make it perform or you can make it give you information that's internal to that in the digital format, superimposed in real life. Okay. And this is a small demo, a very basic demo of a printer which is scanned with a handheld device. It is recognizing that device now, the model of that. There's the ink levels and the power levels which are being gauged and this will actually come to you real time. And if there's a service engineer on site, you can give him instructions on which tray to pull out and what to do to rectify a problem within the machine. All right? That's, that was a very uh, simplistic demo of what we can do with the augmented reality solution. Now, I, I, I end uh, my, my talk with this, with the logo of PTC. Uh, this is based on a concept called yin yang. It's a Chinese concept which talks about two opposing forces complementing each other and creating a greater whole can be male, female, can be night and day, it can be hot and cold, etc. Now, if you look at this logo closely, you'll see that it is uh, the D for digital world that is perfectly complementing the P for the physical world on top. That is PTC's vision. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm open for questions at this moment if you, if you have anything to ask. Sure. Okay, so your question is how do I find the applications of IoT or is it for AR as well for manufacturing and chemical companies? And then trying to deploy this uh, cyber physical, uh, I, I really like the yin yang uh, thing that you spoke about. So right. how do we make this happen? So uh, from whatever you are doing, given the expertise and uh, the products that you have, uh, right. how do you look at, uh, we can deploy them? Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a background on the on PTC as a company. We were founded in 1985. We, we started with CAD CAM, PLM, ALM applications, right? Uh, those were the softwares. We are a pure software company. We created all those softwares for the market. We've got a leadership in Pro Engineer and MathCAD, etc., which were the manufacturing softwares of the yesteryear, uh, still relevant, uh, but that's pretty much saturated. So about four years ago, we started this foray into the IoT AR industry uh, with big data analytics and all of that. So we've got that entire suite. Our number one applicability is in the manufacturing space. Okay, that's where the operational efficiency improvements of even a percentage or two can translate into millions of dollars. So that's 
what a lot of manufacturers worldwide and even in India are recognizing and they've already started a journey with us. We've got uh, a lot of use cases with them. Uh, so that's where the money is to an extent. In, in the consumer space, uh, the home appliances, lighting, etc. is just catching on and that will happen very soon. But in manufacturing, I would say about a couple of years ago in chemical and steel plants, like you mentioned, uh, they're, all, they're all already there. So they all recognize the value of this. And uh, if you need specifics, we can talk as well. Thanks. <clears throat> Any other questions? Infrastructure. Okay, so the way PTC does it, and uh, I would I would think you mean uh, the sensors and devices and all of that, or the backhaul of the servers and yeah. Uh, the way PTC does it is we've been creating manufacturing software. We have some IoT applications for manufacturing to do your production control, uh, monitoring, etc. On the shop floor. The rest of it is we, we create the software platform on top of which application developers find it very easy to build applications, right? So it's very easy for them to you know, roll out an application in a matter of hours. Uh, we do not play in the, uh, in the IT space. We're not there in the hardware space at all, right? So a lot of our solutions are also cloud-based, which means that obviates the need for any servers and storage that you may need because that's running off a cloud data center that we own. But we're not in the devices space. Our ecosystem partners create those devices. They write the applications on top of our platform and we have a lot of them on uh, as part of our family. Yes. So if you've seen the, uh, the text of device, please sit down, uh, device connectivity as the text written in some of my slides, that comes from the Axida acquisition, right? It's a company we bought for $170 million. There's, uh, there's a lot of investment that's gone into it. And device connectivity is one of the major problems in the IoT space because the kind of protocols they, uh, they use and the kind of data formats that come from different devices needs to be made homogeneous, right? So Axida is very much a part of our IoT stack. It's in the ThingWorks family, and that's ThingWorks device connectivity is another name for Axida. Any other questions? Uh, by the way, my name is Hemant and I'm from Bosch. And I represent the Partnership and Alliance division of Bosch. Um, what are your other partnership, what is your partnership strategy as well and uh, whom are you open for partnership in what area? Right. Bosch, by the way, is a, is a consumer of ours and oh, yeah. uh, okay. even Robert Bosch Engineering India, RBEI, is, RBI, I represent is RBI. doing a lot of work in IoT. Uh, the partnership that we have are, are three-pronged, really. We've got the System Integrators Partnership, which is uh, companies that are implementing applications of ours or solutions of ours, right? That's the SI partnership. There's the value-added reseller, value-added distributor partnership, uh, the guys that take our products to market, right? So there's a significant investment in those two. The third kind of partnership is that of OEMs. And OEMs here means ISVs or application builders, people that are building applications on top of a platform. So essentially, uh, the OEMs are people that adopt our platform in any of the modes that I told you. They can be a SaaS uh, partner of ours or a PaaS partner of ours, something like Vodafone. And, uh, and, and they, can, they can create their applications on top of it and take that to market, right? We enable them uh, with the selling ammunition we, because we've got a reach in Americas and, uh, and, and Europe. Uh, we, we make sure there's a joint selling model. So if, if Bosch is, for example, creating an automation application with us on the ThingWorks platform, we could take that to our customers as well, who are traditionally in the manufacturing space, but they are now across all industries. So this is our uh, levels of partnership. Any other questions? Right. 
Thank you very much then. Um, have a good day and enjoy the IoT show.